Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel and today's topic of discussion is algebraic manipulation. Our objective is to review how one algebraically manipulates an expression to solve her desired property. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewers watch the DC Math Lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. In the aforementioned lecture, we reviewed the order of operations, negative and fractional exponents, and the use of the scientific calculator. You might have taken a little effort on your part, but most likely you emerged from this lecture with a refreshed understanding and a deeper appreciation of these skills. If only the same thing could be said about algebraic manipulation. To be perfectly honest, a significant percentage of individuals truly suck at this skill and cannot algebraically manipulate their way out of a paper bag, even if I held the end of the bag open for them. Like it or not, I'm shoving you in that bag and you're going to have to fight your way out because algebraic manipulation is a necessary skill for the electrical circuit analysis series. But before I do, I'm asking you to heed the following general advice. 1. Have a goal and keep the goal in sight at all times. The goal is to isolate the desired unknown property on one side of the equality when all the knowns on the other. 2. Forget the numbers and the units until the final step. Only when you arrive at a final expression should you substitute in the numbers and the units. And finally, three, follow the rules. You can't force a square piece into a round hole. Always maintain equality. Into the bag we go. During the course of your study, you'll often be presented with an equation in a particular form. An example might be Ohm's Law, something we'll discuss at great length in the very near future, expressed as I equals V over R, where the concept of current is symbolically represented as an I and measured in units of amps, is equal to voltage, symbolically represented as a V, measured in the units of volts, divided by resistance, symbolically represented as an R, measured in units of ohms, kind of this funny shaped horseshoe thing. If you've got known voltage and known resistance, one simply divides voltage by resistance and obtains current in units of amps. For example, Given a known voltage of let's say 14.3 volts across a 240 ohm resistor, an application of Ohm's law demonstrates one might expect roughly 59.6 milliampers of current to travel through it. Too easy. An equation like this is a machine as complicated as an apple peeler. It has inputs, voltage and resistance. It performs some operation, voltage divided by resistance. It has an output, current. We explored this level of calculation in the aforementioned DC math lecture and this should be well within your ability level. Not all the time we were presented with such a perfect setup. Sometimes we know voltage and current, but not resistance, or maybe we know current and resistance, but not voltage. No problem. One can always algebraically manipulate a given equation to solve for unknown properties given known inputs. Allow me to demonstrate using Ohm's law. Let's say we know current I and resistance R and want to use these properties to solve for voltage V. The goal of algebraic manipulation is to isolate all the knowns on one side of an equation and all the unknowns on the other. Given our present understanding of Ohm's law, known entities I and R need to be on one side of the equation and unknown quantity V on the other. One doesn't just move these quantities around without restriction, but rather one follows rules regarding their movement. The single most important rule being the equal sign. One can arrange and rearrange any equation in any fashion you wish. However, equality must be maintained at all times. That's the point of equations like Ohm's law. There exists a real observable relationship between these properties and any upsetting of the equality means you're making things up. Equality must be maintained. Here's the general rules to maintaining equality. They all share a common trait. See if you can identify the shared trait. One can add any quantity you wish to one side of the equation. However, you must also add the same quantity to the other side of the equation. One can subtract any quantity you wish to one side of the equation. However, you must also subtract the same quantity to the other side of the equation. One can multiply one side of the equation by any quantity you wish. However, one must also multiply the other side of the equation by the same quantity. One can divide one side of the equation by any quantity you wish. However, you must also divide the other side of the equation by the same quantity. One can raise one side of the equation by any power you wish. However, you must also raise the other side of the equation by the same power. One can invert one side of the equation. However, you must also invert the other side of the equation. Have you figured out the pattern yet? For those of you who haven't, here it is. To maintain equality, one must do to one side what is done to the other. 
we need to isolate unknown property V on one side of the equation. As presently illustrated, it's being divided by R. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. Multiply both sides by R. R cancels out on the right, and we're left with an equally valid permutation of Ohm's law, which states I times R equals V. One can substitute in known values for I and R and determine unknown quantity V. Other equally valid permutations of Ohm's law exist. For example, let's say we knew V and I and wanted to solve for unknown quantity R. We've got a couple different starting points. Let's begin with our second permutation of Ohm's law. As presently illustrated, we need to isolate the unknown property R on one side of the equation. R is presently being multiplied by I. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. Divide both sides by I. I cancels out on the left, and we're left with yet another equally valid permutation of Ohm's law, which states R equals V over I. One can substitute in known values for V and I and determine unknown quantity R. No, one needn't use the second permutation to arrive at the third, but rather proceed from first to third directly. Importantly, it should yield the same result. Allow me to demonstrate. Using the original statement of Ohm's law, we again need to isolate the unknown property R on one side of the equation and known properties V and I on the other. As presently illustrated, R is in the denominator. I do not like that. Let's invert both sides. Inversion means we flip both sides. We're left with 1 over I equals R over V. Unknown property R is being divided by V. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. Multiply both sides by V. V cancels out on the right, and we're left with the identical permutation of Ohm's law, which states R equals V over I. One can substitute in known values for V and I and determine unknown property R. Note in all of these manipulations, I'm giving myself an indication of those steps I perform leading up to these answers. It might seem unnecessary given the simple expression, but trust me, in a more complicated expression, this is a great way of leaving yourself a trail to backtrack if you mess it up. While we're still looking at this simple three-variable expression, let me show you a great shortcut for algebraic manipulations of similar types of expressions. Consider the three properties central to Ohm's law, V, I, and R, illustrated inside a triangle. Let's say I is our property of interest, covered up. I is equal to V divided by R because V is over R. This is our original statement of Ohm's law. What if V was our property of interest? Covered up. V is equal to I times R because I is next to R. This is the second permutation of Ohm's law. Similarly, what if R was our property of interest? Covered up. R is equal to V divided by I because V is over I. This was the third permutation of Ohm's law. For simple three variable expressions like Ohm's law, this is a lightning fast means of algebraically manipulating equations to solve for the desired unknown property. Put your understanding of this concept to the test with this series of illustrated examples of the DC power equation, something we'll examine in greater detail in the near future. Given power, symbolically represented as P, measured in units of watts, is equal to voltage, symbolically represented as V, measured in units of volts, times current, symbolically represented as I, measuring units of amps. See if you can algebraically manipulate this equation to solve for V, given known inputs P and I. Similarly, see if you can algebraically manipulate this same equation to solve for unknown quantity I, given known P and V values. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Given P equals V times I, an algebraic manipulation of this equation demonstrates that V is equal to P over I. Given known P and I values, one can solve for unknown V by dividing P by I. Similarly, an algebraic manipulation of the original or the second permutation demonstrates that I is equal to P over V. Given known P and V values, one can solve for unknown I by dividing P by V. That wasn't too hard, was it? Again, the triangle method works equally well here. Overlay P, V, and I in a triangle. Let's say P is our property of interest. Cover it up. P is equal to V times I because V is next to I. This was our original permutation of the DC power equation. What if V was our property of interest? Cover it up. V is equal to P divided by I because P is over I. Similarly, what if I was our property of interest? Cover it up. I is equal to P divided by V because P is over V. All right, let's turn up the heat. Not all the time we are presented with such simple expressions, and sometimes we need to synthesize two expressions into one. Case in point, 
Ohm's law, and the DC power equations. Thus far, we have three permutations of Ohm's law. V equals I times R, I equals V divided by R, and R equals V divided by I. Additionally, we have three permutations of the DC power equation. P equals V times I, V equals P divided by I, and finally, I equals P divided by V. Given these six equations deal with the same properties, can we use them to divide other valid relationships between P, V, I, and R? Indeed, we can. For example, given known V and known R, can we solve for unknown P? Consider one permutation of Ohm's law, which states I equals V over R, and a permutation of the DC power equation, which states P equals V times I. If I equals V over R, we can substitute V over R into the power equation, which yields V times V divided by R, which simplifies to P equals V squared divided by R. Let's say we wanted to solve for unknown P using the known quantities of I and R. We'll start with one permutation of Ohm's law, which states V equals I times R, and the original DC power equation, which states P equals V times I. If V equals I times R, one can substitute I times R in for V into the DC power equation such that P equals I times R times I, which is simplified such that P equals I squared times R. Let's put your understanding of this concept to the test with a series of illustrated example problems. Given three permutations of Ohm's law, the three original permutations of the DC power equations, and these two new permutations, solve for the desired unknown properties in terms of the indicated known properties. The first example is asking us to solve for R in terms of V and P. The second is also asking us to solve for R, but only in terms of I and P. The third problem is asking us to solve for I in terms of P and R. And finally, the last problem is asking us to solve for V in terms of P and R. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should obtain the following results. Our first problem is asking us to solve for unknown quantity R in terms of known P and V values. There's multiple places to start. Perhaps the easiest jump off would be one of the newer permutations where P equals V squared divided by R. Solve for R. R is in the denominator. I don't like this. Let's invert both sides. When we flip both sides, we're left with 1 over P equals R divided by V squared. Unknown property R is being divided by V squared. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. Multiply both sides by V squared. V squared cancels out on the right. We're left with R equals V squared divided by P. One can substitute in known values for V and P and determine unknown property R. Alternatively, one can begin with one permutation of Ohm's law, which states R equals V over I, and another permutation of the DC power formula, which states I equals P over V. If I is equal to P over V, one can substitute P over V in for I, which yields a rather ugly fraction, R is equal to V divided by P divided by V. We have got to clean this up. Follow my lead here. Division is the same thing as multiplication by the inverse. This is an extremely handy trick. For example, some quantity divided by 2 is the same thing as that same quantity times 1 half, i.e. the inverse of 2. Similarly, dividing something by 4 is equivalent to multiplying that same quantity by 1 quarter. It stands to conjecture dividing V by P over V is the same thing as multiplying V times the inverse of P over V. The inverse of P over V is V over P, so we're left with R equals V times V divided by P, which when simplified yields R equals V squared divided by P. Notably the same result we obtained earlier, albeit by more direct means. In the interest of time, I'll review the remaining results using the most direct method. Other methods should exist that ultimately yield the same answer, albeit with more or less work. The second problem is asking us to solve for unknown property R in terms of known properties I and P. I started with the equation P equals I squared times R. Divide both sides by I squared. I squared cancels out on the right. Or we're left with R equals P divided by I squared. The third problem is asking us to solve for unknown quantity I in terms of known properties P and R. Again, I started with P equals I squared times R. Divide both sides by R. R cancels out on the right and we're left with I squared equals P divided by R. This is not the answer to the problem. We need to solve for I. Take the square root of both sides. Ultimately, we're left with I equals square root of P divided by R. Note that the terms P over R appear entirely underneath the square root operation. 
Finally, the last problem is asking us to solve for unknown property V in terms of known properties P and R. I started with P equals V squared divided by R. Multiply both sides by R. R cancels out on the right, and we're left with V squared equals R times P. Again, this is not the answer to the problem. We're looking for unknown quantity V, not V squared. Square root both sides. We're left with V equals square root of R times P. Again, note that the term P times R appears entirely underneath the square root operation. 